Okay, so I've got the video editing software ready to go. And here is the video that I just, just shot. And I don't know if you guys can see this, but it is about 10 minutes total from start to finish. And that's, for me, that's very long. If I had another guest here and it was like some great beer and we were just, you know, raving about it for 10 minutes, I could see, you know, not cutting much. But for me, by myself, that is like way too long. So I'm going to try to get this down to six minutes, maybe seven, seven and a half at most. So anyway, uh, I'm going to start all the way at the beginning here. I'm going to zoom in. If I roll the wheel on my mouse, it zooms in and you get this uh, fade in offset. So all my videos have a one second fade in. And what I also do is I will pull it over to about a half second. So you kind of have like a half second of dead air and then the fade in and let's begin. Hey, welcome to episode of Chad's Beer Reviews. By the way, I tend to uh, play back the video at like 2x speed, so it's going to pitch my voice up like a chipmunk. But, you know, we're, we're, it's, not, it's not that we're pressed for time, it's just that I have a short attention span, so. Chad's Beer Reviews. Doing a beer tonight from my old stomping grounds of upstate New York. This is from Brewery Amagang from... Okay, so when I say Brewery Amagang, I was already thinking this when I was filming it. So here is the the little snippet of when I filmed the actual bottle. If you've seen any of my beer reviews over the last year or two, you know you probably recognize this format. So uh, I'm gonna bring this video in as the top level video so that it'll you know fade over the the main video. I don't need the sound on this you know bottle part, so I'm gonna go down here, right click, switches, mute to get rid of the sound. I can also delete it, but it's it's easier to just do that. All right, so let's get back to it. I'm gonna move this over a smidge here, let's see. Brewery Amagang from Cooperstown, New York, home of the Baseball Hall of Fame. Three philosophers, quadruple ale, 9.7 ABB, a blend of quadruple and creek ale with cherries. It's gonna be done because creek, that's what creek is. All right, so you can see that the video, like the shot of the bottle is moving faster than what I'm saying. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to it's and this is the easiest thing to do is kind of a cheat is I can just get rid of all this because since you can't see me talking, I'm just going to get rid of all that and speed up the process. I'm an AVB. So it just says enjoy by August of 2027. wonder how many years out that is. Probably four. All right. So we can get rid of I wonder how many years out that is and all that because I want to get straight into the pour. In fact, I might even move these a little closer together. Again, you can't really see it. Like, whenever you see a flat line on the sound there, you know, it's just kind of dead air. Get rid of all that. Um, let's get to where I'm talking about the pour. pour. So this was probably last summer. Anyway, pour. Right, so this is where I say pour into the Spiegel glass. And it's a lot easier to get rid of this stuff at the end than it is to, you know, sync it up. So I'm just going to pull that in a little. And then I will grab the next video clip. And this is of the actual pour. Now I do want to keep the sound in for the opening of the bottle cap or opening of the can so you can hear the pss, you know, and then the actual pouring. So, and then when I cross fade this over, when I pull it over, see that purple or pink line right there? That represents one second. That's what I do for pretty much anything where it's two video clips crossing over each other. Seven. Pour into the Spiegel tulip glass, and that is a beautiful kind of cherry burgundy. My, my only complaint with this, okay, so I'm talking about the color and it still hasn't come out of the glass yet, so I'm gonna uh, trim this a little. Seven. See how it looks now. Pour into the Spiegel tulip glass. By the way, when you're editing and you're doing this, it's like you're gonna hear yourself say the same thing over and over again. That's just, the, that's just how editing goes. Seven. Pour into the Spiegel tulip glass. And That's why I play it 2 XP. Beautiful kind of cherry burgundy hue coming out. It's pouring into a large, I'd probably call it like a tan khaki kind of a, more of a soapy foam. By the way, you see these little sound bumps right here? That's just like the bottle hitting the desk. So I'm gonna, I can actually mute that. So I'm going to click on the sound here, split it, right click down here, go to switches, mute. So that from everything from here over, you won't hear the sound, but you probably won't notice that 
you probably won't notice that you like this sound cuts out because there isn't really much sound to begin with. Tan, khaki, kind of, uh, and I'll fade of out right here. Foam. It actually is fizzling away. I keep topping it off, but uh, yeah, really good looking beer in the glass there. It's gonna smell interesting. Um, I, I thought this beer, I'm pretty sure this beer was uh, like a blend of like actually, I say on the website right here. Let me show you guys. So this is something I do sometimes, not in every video, but like I'll bring up the brewer's website and I kind of like stumbled over my words there. So there isn't much reason. Like I think I can go straight to where I have the brewery's website pulled up. And in fact, I can probably get rid of this. So it goes straight from there to the shot of the website. More of a soapy foam. It actually is fizzling away to keep topping it off, but uh, I can get rid of the butt. Uh, right, so. Actually, this whole part is going to go. Whoops, why is that? Sorry, you know, I, I got to go back to options, preferences. Got to delete everything as one. All right, so let's see how it looks now. Um, it actually is fizzling away to keep topping it off. A blend of quadruple and Belgian Creek. It's kind of a clunky, um, you know, crossfade or whatever, or scene transition, but. Um, it actually it, it is works. Way to keep topping it off. A blend of quadruple and Belgian Creek. They even have the hops and malts. Yeah, blending those two percent Leafman's Creek blended in the brew kettle. Uh, yeah, nine point seven. We need that twenty-one IBUs. I have the gravity that's in Plato is different than what homebrewers use. Anyway, as, as I was gonna say, I always remember the spirit was two percent Creek, and you know, but that two percent is coming through in the nose. I think I can oh, cut this out, right? Because, like, what I'm saying, as I was saying, but it's a reference to something I already cut out. So let's cut that out and go back to. I'm just going to cross fade that over. Let's see how it looks now. Yeah, that's in Play Doh. It's different than what Homebrewers use. That 2% is coming through in the nose. Now, there is dead air here. You see the flat line, but it's only a few seconds and it's part of the smell. So it doesn't. Yeah, so I can smell that creak, but I, I'll, I'll I can leave also it in. smell that. Belgian quad base there, so I'm getting like, you know, figs, ra figs, raisins, dates, stuff like that. I think you get like. Well, obviously, I get a cherry from the creek. That's what it is. But yeah, it has like that Belgian. I would have almost banana. I would no, not banana on this one, but it does have a slight kind of spiciness on it. And I don't smell or yeah, I can't like the alcohol's out there as far as I can tell. So let's dive in here. Cheers. All right, so if you've been watching me for a while, you know, always the when I say cheers and I take my first sip, that's when I have my YouTube pop up. I've been doing this for like, I don't know, a year and a half, two years. So let's bring that in and I'll bring the timeline right over it. And as you can see, it's green because it's a green screen. How are we going to get rid of the green? Well, you click Event FX, Chroma Keyer, OK, brings up this pop up and where it says color. See, it defaults to blue, but you can change it to whatever color you want. So I'm going to click that blue bar. There's an eyedropper here, just like there would be with the video or, you know, a photo web, like Photoshop or whatever. Click that. Click it anywhere in the green, and it makes the green disappear. That's the magic of green screen in Chroma Keyer. Also, you notice that I got rid of the sound on the pop-up, because I used to have, like, the click, 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 click bell. But I, I think that's a little annoying, so I think it's just better hmm. silent. Well, the alcohol is uh, a little more prominent in the flavor, or like I can feel it and taste it more than I can smell it. Uh, it's funny because like last night, Chris and I did the Belgian Dark Strong Ale style for Tuesday Night Beer School, so check that out. All right, so I'm mentioning the Tuesday Night Beer School. Let me grab that um, thumbnail, if I can find it. Here it is, it's right here. All right, so I'm gonna, since I mentioned that, you know, it's a good way to plug my own stuff. So I'm gonna bring that in here, and as you can see, just because it's 16 by nine, it, it covers the whole screen, but I just want to move this to the corner. And I already have a preset for that. Is there a top right corner? Yeah. All right, so I'm just going to move that there and I will do a fade in and fade out on that because otherwise it looks kind of jarring if it just pops, it just appears and disappears. All right, so where did I, now I just have to find where I said it. The alcohol is a, a little more prominent in the flavor or like I can feel it and taste it more than I can smell it. Uh, it's funny because like last night Chris and I did the Belgian Dark Strong Ale style for Tuesday Night Beer School, so check that out. Um, so I definitely have the a lot of uh, Belgian quads in uh, my brain right now. Uh, it's kind of a weird turn of phrase or whatever, but whatever. All right, so I'm, here's now I can cut out all sips 
I, I see no reason to keep sips in. It's just dead air. I just keep that first one in there basically for the YouTube pop up. All right, so I'm gonna crossfade this here. So it's like the beginning of one sip and the end of the next. Yeah, yeah so, so I'm, I'm trying to decide like which of the Belgian quads like to compare this to. It's not quite as spicy as Chimay or Rochefort, but it's not like super sweet like Le Trap either. I would say this one is quite fruity, but you can kind of file that under duh, because it's got that 2% Leaf Beans Creek blend in there. By the way, if I judge this to spec, I don't think I would judge it as a quad because just that adding the, the Leafman's Cherry Creek to it kind of turns it into, I mean, well, it's not a complete fruit beer. I guess you could call it a hybrid or a blend, but it's not, it's, it's not a straight quad. All right, everything I just said right here, I feel like that was like redundant and kind of off topic and I'm going to I'm going to cut that out for now. So what I can do is I can cut everything right there. So like the viewer would never know that that was gone because it's going to I'm taking a sip and then it come back to the putting the glass down. So let's see how it looks. Uh my brain right now. Yeah, so pretty spicy. Really spicy. Um it's hard to describe. It's not I mean, the closest thing in like the most obvious to compare it to would be clove, but it's not as clovey as like some of the good German Weizenbachs or even like an Apple Weizen or something like that. And it's not the same clove as like a Belgian, uh, sh sorry, Chimay Blue. Even that part I feel like I could get rid of, but it's fairly short. Um, but it is kind of important, like talking about the, the clovey phenolics and all that. So I'll leave that in. If I if we're going really long, I'll come back and cut that out, but I'll leave it in for now. The first thing I notice on every sip that I take is like how effervescent it is. That's pretty normal for the style. In fact, maybe I will cut that out because I'm talking about like the first, you know, the first thing I notice and all that. So the first thing I notice on every sip that I take is like how effervescent it is. That's pretty normal for the style. You know, the thing about the, the Belgian quad is like it's like the only beer that's like pretty strong. I mean, nine point seven that's pretty strong, but it's also so highly carbonated because you're, I'm so used to beers. Anything like over eight or nine percent is usually like kind of moderately carbonated at most, and they tend to have like big bodies. The quad is like you know medium full, but also highly you know champagne effervescent, so it's kind of messes with your head that way. All right, that, I think that part, that whole segment is fine. Let's go to the next one. Get rid of that, crossfade. Hey. Yeah, I would yeah, say this, this one, one is more phenolic. phenolic than estery. Do you know the difference between phenol phenols and esters? How to brew by John Palmer, or even tasting beer by Randy Mosier is a, is a good resource for that. Also, if you want to become a beer judge, you're going to need, need to know the difference. All right, that whole part, that's, uh, that's fluff. That's total fat that can be cut out. Let's get rid of that, so... By the way, what are we at on time? Because we were at like 10 minutes when we started, and now we're at 7.45 or so, and we still have a, you know, a few minutes to go. So this one probably is going to get down to about seven, seven and a half minutes, maybe even less. Let's uh, keep Come going. Messes with your head that way. Yeah, so this starts and ends pretty spicy. I'd say it's spicy throughout the whole thing. has a bit of a fruitcake kind of flavor to it. I don't know if I would say this. I wouldn't describe it as like malty. Like when I think malty, I think like doppelbach or even regular bach, you know, something like that. The thing about the quads is that a lot of the flavor comes from like, the candy syrup, not so much the malt, because like, it's basically just Pilsner malt and like maybe a little bit of specialty malt. And uh, it's just the yeast, and the, the Belgian candy syrup that's you know steering the ship, I guess you could say. So yeah, it's fruity as far as like you get that Belgian Creek, you got the candy syrup, you got the uh, Amagang house yeast, that's you know very phenolic. Um, so spicy, like I said, kind of fruit cakey, but it's not. I wouldn't would really call it. It's not sweet per se. All right, that whole segment I think is fine. I don't see any reason to delete anything off there. So just go to the next one. Hey. Has, has like, like maybe like, like a, a tiny, tiny little bit. bit. Almost like a hint or a kiss of like vanilla to it. Again, just the sweetness from like the big malt. Although it finishes quite dry. I'm not even saying it finishes bone dry. That 9.7 comes in and just kind of whatever was on that tongue just kind of like sweeps it off, you know. That's why a lot of really strong beers, except for like maybe the case of Imperial Stouts, they tend to just, uh, that alcohol just, you know, tends to help with the bitterness. It's hard to pick out, like, what would be the actual hop flavor and hop bitterness in this one. All that spice, I assume, is um, yeast derived. Uh, I thought about cutting that part out where I was talking about the Imperial Stouts and stuff, but I'll just leave it in for now. All right, so let's get rid of that. Go here. Right. Yeah, so I would say medium full body hot. I can get rid of that yeah, so right here. In fact, I could probably get rid of that, I would say, but I think it kind of is like a clunky transition without it. Um, yeast drive. I would say... Medium full body, high carbonation. Definitely get a little bit of alcohol warmth. I mean, I got more on the first few sips and it seems to have subsided now, which is kind of ironic because like the more you drink, the more the beer warms up. I would say the cherry, you know, it starts out strong. You know, it is only 2% of the brew. And just the more that I drink, the more it just kind of fades into the background. So it's, 
and it, it's really hard to judge like this to style. So I mean, you can, you know, hybrid styles like this, you just kind of get to go personal preference or hedonistic or whatever. Okay, so look, notice what I'm talking about. You know, I, most of the, so far I've been talking about like aroma, appearance, flavor. I'm starting to get, get into mouthfeel and drinkability overall. That's how I usually end it. Um, let's see Perfect. what else is coming. Even though I just shot By this, way, I kind of forgot. It's been like 14 years since the last time I had this. Last time I had this was with uh, Henry. All right, first of all, that's not true. I have had this many times, but I do remember filming this with Henry back in January of 2012. In fact, I grabbed that video. It was episode 615. And all right, so I'm going to bring that down because I just want to show that. But this is like I'm bringing the whole video in, and it's like, you know, I don't know, eight or ten minutes or whatever. So I'm going to go to I, – I need. I, there's no reason to have sound on here, so I'm going to go to – I mean, I could just mute it. I guess I will. I'm going to pull that there. Right click here, switches, mute. I'm just trying to find where we're actually drinking it. See if I, if I can find the part where we cheers and yeah, there we go. Oh, perfect. All right, so here's the cheers. So I'm gonna get rid of everything before that. I just need like a few seconds on here. I'm just gonna grab about here, split, and then delete everything after it. Now I'm just gonna drag this over. Great, I lost my place. I think I was here. I had to have been somewhere around here, right? Uh, let's go back. By the way, it's been like 14 years since the last time I had this. The last time I had this was with uh, Henry. All right, see, I'm pointing to the top left corner, so I want to put this in the top left corner. All right, let's do a fade in and fade out. So one second in, one second out. And if I click the timeline right over, it's going to, obviously, it's because it's 16 by 9, it's covering the whole screen. But I just want it in the corner. So I'm just going to grab the cropping tool and zoom out here. And I can pull this until it goes to where in the frame that I want it. Yeah, I think that's good. And this last time I had this was with... Uh, Henry back in 2012 and it was funny because like at the time I hadn't seen him in like six months or so and he didn't have a beard you know I'll put a clip right there um I don't think I've had this since then maybe it's not true I have had this many times since then I just forgot until I looked it up all right so we're down to about seven and a half minutes we're trying to we're at the home stretch here so let's just I know they actually, finish they this up a nitro version of this which would be really interesting I couldn't find that one but um as far as the score for the three philosophers, I like it. It's not one of the best Belgian quads, like Rochefort 10 right there. Um, but I'm, not, I'm not sure you can even really score it or judge it as a quad because of that 2% uh, uh, Lambda Creek in, or whatever in there. That being said, it is tasty, and they've been making this beer for like probably 20 years or so, maybe more. So, you know, people like it. I like it. I'm going to go, to me, this is a solid 8 out of 10. It's, it's good, or very good, I should say. It's just not quite, you know, Hall of Fame type beer, even though I do love... Okay, this might actually have been brewed at Boulevard. He okay, so I start talking about this might have been brewed at Boulevard, and I'm trying to get the camera to focus, but it doesn't. So I'm just going to cut that whole part out. In fact, you know, I gave the rating. So, like, once I give the rating, I'm pretty much ready to, to go. You know, I think I covered everything. You know, mouthfeel, carbonation, you know, drink the flavor, everything. So I got the score. Let's, uh, let's good, get out I of here. Say. It's just not quite, you know, Hall of Fame type beer, even though I do love all right, so I do say, I'm just going to end it after I say Hall of Fame beer. You know, Hall of Fame type beer. Yep. All right, so I'm going to get, whoops, split there. And I just got to find at the where I wrap it up. Because I'm a gang in Boulevard merged like 10 or 15 years ago. Yeah, nobody needs to know that. I am rambling. If you watch all the way in, you know you're awesome. Check out. Now, normally that would be the end because I'm saying if you watch all the end, you're awesome. But then I start saying, I start plugging the podcast and everything. Chad's Beer Podcast. So we, uh, Tuesday Night Beer then I come back and say, say I'm rambling again. All right. Watch all right. Well, I just say if you watch all the way to the end, you're awesome. So here's a huge chunk that I can cut out. So I'm going to zoom in here, split this. So I'm going to get rid of all this. By the way, I don't know your editing software works, but whenever you're going to delete something, you have, the video has to be stopped. I can't be, if I if this was playing and then I try to delete it, it'll just keep playing forever and it's so annoying. So make sure if, if you're using Movie Studio or Vegas or whatever, hit stop, then delete. And I'm going to 
do a crossfade there for about a second. And we're at the outro, so I'm going to fade out for one second. And we'll see how it looks. All the same type here. Watch all this, and you know you're awesome. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Cheers. Kind of stumbled my words there, but I think you know what I mean. All right, so that's pretty much the end. I'm going to put my outro in here. Now, this is the, if somebody brewed it, you know. And the reason I keep this in here is just for the, the like, the two, um, like, click here to watch, like, you know, best recommended for a viewer or, you know, latest video plus the subscribe button. Uh, eventually, I'm going to start doing, like, a video here, like, kind of plugging the the podcast and my t-shirt store and stuff like that. But I haven't got that far yet. By the way, I forgot to put the uh, the links plug in here. So I'm going to do that real quick. Usually, I do that last. The only thing I have to do is change, go to options and turn off auto ripple because if I move this here, anything that's after it, it, it would bump it. So, I, but I don't need to do that. So I'm just gonna move this here and it's the same thing. So I just click on it, go to FX, chroma keyer, okay. Click the blue bar, the eyedropper, click the green, turns it invisible, close this out. Now I will do a one second fade in and fade out. This is 20 seconds total. I usually do this twice, usually once in the middle of the video and then again at the end. Cause I'm thinking like, if you see it right at the, as the video ends, then you're, the viewer might be thinking, okay, I know that's his, uh, you know, handle on untapped or on Instagram. I'm going to go look that up. Maybe I could just, maybe I should just move it to here. Yeah. You know, maybe I'll do that as a experiment. Let's see how it looks. Fame type beer. Watch all this and you know you're awesome. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Cheers. So when, when this is on YouTube, you'll see like the, you know, best for a viewer, most recent video and the subscribe button right here. Uh, yeah, so that is how you edit. By the way, if you guys wanna do these uh, pop-ups and stuff, like they're really easy to find it's going to go on YouTube. Yeah. So all you have to do is just find whatever video you want, uh, you know, and then download it. And then you can use that as your own. Uh, the actual, this part with the, you know, all my logos and, you know, my at handle and all that, I just did it in PowerPoint and then just did the green screen. This is like a still image and I just made it into a video. That was really easy. All right. So, that's how I make video beer reviews, at least how I do it now. Uh, so cover, you know, aroma and appearance first. Most of it is flavor. I do talk about like the body, mouthfeel, drinkability towards the end, give it a rating and then get out of there and try to keep it to about six to eight minutes or so. If I have a guest, I think you can go up to 10 minutes, but you know, I think even that's pushing. I just, maybe it's just me. I just seem to have like a short attention span. I just don't think anybody would want to watch this far. So be sure to check out the next class. I will show you how to make a, or I should say how to turn a full length video like this, even shorter into a portrait mode, 60 second or less, you know, TikTok or YouTube short. And I'll show you how to do SEO, how to do thumbnails. And that's probably, I'm sure I'm thinking, I'm sure I'm missing something, but yeah, as always, if you watch all the way in, you know, you're awesome. Thanks for watching. I will see you guys in the next lesson. Bye.